Uh, hello everyone welcome to the session i've just started the recording um it's completely voluntary that you show up your video it's up to you and uh, we will publish this in uh, so-called tamil youtube channel later um thanks for joining let's get into the session let me share my screen megna can you see my screen yeah i can all right sounds good uh, this is a very interesting session in uh, our uh, series of sessions that we give from Style Program. We have done several sessions in uh, entrepreneurship, leadership, and uh, volunteering opportunities, and uh, public speaking, and technology learning, and um, a lot of sessions on uh, education series, like tech in terms of you know um, how to participate in uh, science fair and. Um, um, and then uh, how to uh, develop a website and things like that in the past. And robotics is really new to um, style. Uh, we haven't done any sessions on robotics and uh, let's get started. Um, so uh, just before we start the session, um, I would like to uh, just go through the agenda. So I uh, will start with the welcome address and a few housekeeping announcements. Um, uh, and then Meghna, uh, will do a presentation and uh, have something interactive with you. And then there will be a Q&A session and then a uh, vote of thanks. If uh, anybody wants to volunteer for that, uh, feel free. Otherwise, we'll do at the end. Um, and then, um, as usual, we start with a quote and you can see that um, this is a very famous quote. Like People think of education as uh, something they can finish, but it's not true, right? Education is... Uh, everlasting uh, or you know uh, it's like a breathing you keep doing it throughout your life and it's not going to end and that's the only way that the uh, humanity or human uh, evolving right so uh, do you know um, any idea like who told this okay that's fine i'm um he's the person who quoted this any idea who is this okay he is, uh, he is the Isaac Asimov. He is a very famous um, American writer and professor. Um, I'm sure like many of you watched the iRobo movies, right? And iRobo is kind of a, it's a fiction or a novel that is a series of novels that was written by um, Isaac Asimov. And he is one of a very famous um, uh, person who wrote a lot of fiction novels and about robotics and um, he is considered as one of the forefront or fathers of uh, robotics um, and he the, the very famous thing that uh, uh, most people would know is the three laws of robotics that he uh, authored earlier so let's start this and um, we um, in style the so-called tamil youth leadership and entrepreneurship team takes great pleasure in uh, welcoming Meghna Raj. And he, he's, she's a, a senior in uh, uh, Arnold Beckman High School, Dustin Unified School District. And she's very, very passionate about robotics. And she is part of the school robotics team for the last uh, five plus years. And she has participated in uh, so many tournaments or you know the robotics fairs. And she has a lot of experience in that and also at the world level and state level. And with that, um, I would like to hand over to Meghna Raj and uh, uh, thanks Meghna for doing it and really uh, welcome. And, uh, and thanks for participants for joining this. Uh, it's a great session and uh, I'll hand over to Meghna. Let me stop sharing. Over to you, Meghna. Of course, thank you for having me. Okay, I'll get my um, screen shared real quick. Okay, can you see the presentation? Yes, we can see it. Okay, so hi everyone. As um, Uncle introduced me, my name is Magana. I'm a senior in Back at Beckman, and this is my fifth year in robotics. And today I'm going to be talking about what robotics is, my experience in the program, and some more information about robotics, like the design process and how to get involved. And then at the end, I'll have a little review kahoot just to see like if you guys have learned anything. And then as Uncle said, we'll have some question time at the end. 
So first, I'd like to start off with a question for you guys. What do you think robotics is? Like, you guys can uh, answer in the chat or you can unmute if anyone wants to uh, share what they think it is. So uh, try to have this session more um, interactive uh, oh. students and parents okay. feel free to stop and ask questions and uh, uh, feel free to pitch in. Um, mm -hmm. If not, that's fine. Um, so robotics is an interdisciplinary branch of computer science and engineering and robotics involves design construction, operation, and use of robots. And the goal of robotics is to help design machines that can help and assist <clears throat> humans. And robots are autonomous machines that are capable of sensing their environment, carrying out computations to make decisions, and performing actions in the real world. So there are many industries that use robotics. When we think about robotics, it's not just like <clears throat> engineering the biomedical field uses it, the aerospace industry uses it, the car industry uses it. There's so many different, robotics is like the center and there's so many different things you can do with robotics. Like in the manufacturing industry, the, in the assembly line, robotics, robots are used to make things more efficient because robots can perform re repetitive tasks. And this is efficient because they can perform them precisely and they don't need breaks. In the biomedical industry, prosthetics are used to help people walk and machines that doctors use help them with surgeries because robots can be precise and can work in a, a small amount of space. Robotics is all around us and industries use robots because they're safer, a greater investment and are more efficient. They can do jobs that are hazardous and are dangerous to humans. They can also do jobs that are strenuous and difficult, like lifting heavy weight, because our backs can only handle that much. And they're also very repetitive. They can do tasks that are repetitive and precise. They don't need to take breaks and they can work over the weekend. So the high initial, the high initial cost of robots is in, insignificant compared to the profits that firms eventually gain because of investing in these robots. Basically, with the rise of technology, more jobs are becoming automated. And so, of course, the automation of the manufacturing industry means people would lose jobs. So that's one of the cons of automation. <clears throat> um, it's quite, robotics doesn't have to be completely like manufacturing. There's also a lot of fun things that can come out of robotics. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but these little robots with the flags, they're actually like, they deliver food to your house for university students and they sing a song and then these robots play soccer and this is a robot dog. So there's a lot of um, cool things you could also do with robotics. And then personally, it's quite fun to see the innovative ways for me that companies have started using robots and it's important to stay updated on the current innovations. So here are some of my favorite modern robots um, that are producing the things that we consume. Okay. Uh, can you see this video? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So the audio doesn't come through well, so you can speak if you want. Um, because you, I, I think oh. you didn't share it with the audio, so that's fine. You can you can keep. Um, okay. Um, is the audio not playing? I can um, turn. It. I can talk as well. Yeah, okay. yeah, you can talk. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. I, that... So basically, this company, what they're doing is they're um, 
exploring the intersection between hydroponics, which is growing um, plants without uh, soil and using robotics to do that. So as you can see, there's multiple advantages of using robotics to do this because farming with hydroponics, the ro robots can control exactly how much water these plants need and they can compute that using sensors that um, get the temperature and the pH level. So all these plants are monitored by these systems by, ro by robots and in general, this whole system just makes it a bit a lot more efficient and can grow a larger amount of plants uh, using ro robotics. Okay. Um, next, I'll talk a little bit more about um, the robotics program I'm a part of. So I'm part of Vex Robotics, and it's in international program and people from all over the world compete. The way it works is that each year VEX releases a game and we build a robot that can score the most points. We take this robot to competitions and we compete to win awards or even the tournament itself. Winning gets you a ticket to state and if you win a award or the competition itself at the state level, you can go to the world level, which is what me and my team did. And some awards are given based off of how well the, we document the process of designing our robot. So we spend a lot of time on our notebook and the robot is controlled by a remote controller. So we're still playing with them during the competition and it's very interactive and fun. And it's at some point it becomes more like a game more than like, like engineering. And so in these photos, you can see how many teams compete. It's a very exciting experience and it is more of a game, honestly, because there's a lot more strategy and planning at the end and than the actual building. And that also determines how well we do. As a robotics student, I go in after school to the robotics room and work with my team, which has eight people to build and program our robot. And then at competitions, we play multiple matches and then get ranked based off of how we do. Um, so this is the state competition. So as you can see, it's a little bit more fancy and there's people, not the spectators are people from engineering companies and there's a lot of opportunities from going to higher levels of robotics because you get to meet engineers, meet people who actually work in the field. So if you can find a way, which I will explain a bit more about how to get involved in robotics, once you get involved in robotics, you a lot of opportunities branch out because of the people you may meet. And these are two of um, the robots that I have worked on so far. Uh, and then this is the game video. I It's like the introduction video. I'm going to see if it works really quickly. Um, Give me a second. Is that the one that you built, uh, your team built? Uh, yeah, the robot photos that I showed you were the ones that my team built. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Um, if I mute myself, can you tell me if you can hear the audio real quick? So um, I think you need to share it with the audio. Um, you need to stop sharing and then when you share it again, you can uh, share it with the audio. Okay, let me try that real quick. Oh, I see, got it. Can you uh, elaborate? Uh, minutes. Sorry, huh? uh, can you elaborate a bit about the VEX? Um, oh yeah. Maybe okay. uh, either either before the video or after the video. Yeah. I'll I'll elaborate a bit more after. Okay. Or actually, I can do right now. So mm -hmm. it's. Basically, they give you a game. So the season is one year. So my five years of robotics have been uh, my eighth grade year, my freshman year, my sophomore year, my junior year, and my senior year. And each year they release a game. I'll, like, you'll see it a bit more in the video. And you have to create a robot that like can create, that can score the most points. So this is what, this is my favorite game. I'm just going to show you guys like, what the 
what we're trying to like accomplish and like what type of robots we build. And while you're watching, um, I want you guys to think about like what you want your robot to do. Like what are some goals you want your robot to accomplish? So this is kind of like the problem that our robot needs to solve. It's in robotics. The 2019-2020 game, Vex Robotics Competition, Tower Takeover. Tower Takeover is played on a 12 foot by 12 foot field by two alliances, one red and one blue, made up of two teams each. The object of the game is to get more points than the other alliance by scoring cubes in goals and placing cubes in towers. The VRC Tower Takeover field contains 66 cubes. There are 22 of each color, orange, green, and purple. In addition, there are seven towers around the field. Five of these are neutral, and two are specific to your alliance. Alliance towers may only be utilized by robots from that alliance. There are also four goal zones, two per alliance in the corners of the field. Goal zones may only be utilized by robots from that alliance. Cubes are five and a half inches across, or 139.7 millimeters, and are worth at least one point when scored in a goal zone. However, the exact value of each cube is determined by how many cubes of that specific color have been placed in towers. All cubes start with a base value of one point. Then, each additional cube of that color that has been placed in a tower increases the point value of that color's scored cubes by one point. This means that although cubes in towers are not worth any points by themselves, the value of scored cubes in goal zones may change throughout the match. When cubes are placed in or removed from towers, the new values apply to all cubes. So, the actions of one robot will impact the potential score for both their own alliance and their opponents. Each match begins with a 15-second autonomous period where robots score on their side of the field without help from their drivers. The alliance that scores more points in the autonomous period is awarded with six bonus points added to the final score at the end of the match. The alliance who wins this autonomous bonus is also awarded two purple cubes, which may be introduced at any time during the driver control period. The one minute, 45 second driver control period begins once the autonomous bonus winner has been determined. At the end of the driver control period, after all objects and robots have come to rest, the match will be scored to determine the winning alliance. Remember, even though potential point values may be changing throughout the match, VRC games are not scored until the driver control period has ended. Official rules and game information for VEX Robotics Competition. Okay, so that is like an in like a game introduction. So we we build the robot around uh, this game. And we try to use like the towers and scoring different color cubes to score the most points. And we do this by building robots, which I will talk a bit more about the process. So usually the first thing we, as engineers, robot, robotics students do when they're faced with a problem is to think about what they want the robot to do. And that is the first step in the design process, which is to, define the problem. So the first step, this is where you assess what we want our robot to do and uh, list out criteria and constraints. Can you do a slideshow, Megana? Oh, yeah, my bad. Okay. And so after watching this video, for me, some of the criteria constraints I wanted my robot to do were to be able to put the cubes in the towers because that's a very important way to multiply the points. I wanted to be able to stack the cubes in the in the zones, and I wanted our robot to be fast so that it can be other ro it can beat other robots on the field and be the robot that scores the most. <clears throat> and although this may seem a bit obvious, like that's what the robot's supposed to do, it helps direct how we design. So the next step we have is to research and brainstorm. This is where we use creativity and research to come up with many possible solutions. It is probably the most exciting part because this is where ideas begin. We look through the internet, use 
past experiences and even come up with completely new ideas. And But this step is generally a bit vague. And we become more specific with our ideas in the next step where we develop them a bit further. So these are some of the materials that the VEX program uses for building our robots. <clears throat> Sorry, we have metals which range from different sizes and different materials, and they have holes in them so that way we can screw them together. And we also have gears, axles, screws, nuts, spacers, and washers. And we put these all together and are able to create uh, robots that can latch onto these components and move uh, after we program them. And these are just some of the mechanical components we use, but by using like axles and gears, we can rotate metal and we can combine metal and create prototypes. And during step four, we start to think more about what exact parts we want to use and the cost for it. For example, we can use aluminum and or steel and steel is stronger, but it's also heavier. So our robot will slow down. And this is similar to the real world because resources are limited and companies will wanna make sure they're using the things they have to their maximum capability. So a robot in VEX is made up of three subsystems. So in the real world, robots may have more than one subsystem, but generally in my program, they use three subsystems. And these subsystems accomplish different things and together they create the robot. The first system is the chassis, which is the base frame. Um, which is the base frame of a motor vehicle or other wheeled conveyance, which is in this case, our robot. And there are many designs you can come up with for a chassis based off of where you want the wheels to be and how you want to brace the two sides of the chassis. But the main goal of the chassis is to be sturdy because they hold the rest of the robot and help the robot move around. The second subsystem is the lift. Lifts are assembled to lift other manipulators vertically or to lift the robot off the ground. Lifts are usually activated using motors attached to a gear system or a sprocket chain system and are usually attached to the robot chassis. And lifts are capable of uh, reaching extreme heights. So in the game that I showed you, we might use lifts to help reach the towers or to stack cubes on top of each other so that way we can score the most amount of points in the limited space we're given. Um, again, there are many types of lifts, depending on your robot goals, you can choose lifts that lift straight up or lifts that lift up and out. And this is where um, knowing what you want your robot to do comes in handy. So that way, you know exactly what you want to build and what to research and what to test. Um, and the third system, subsystem is the intake, which is the mechanism that manipulates the desired object. So if you have a cube, you could do like a claw or you could use rollers to intake the cubes. It's entirely up to the designer. And this is the robot that I showed you before. And you can even kind of see the subsystem in this robot. So at the bottom, we have the chassis. As you can see, we have the wheels and it's the base of the robot and everything else on the robot is dependent on this sturdy chassis. And here we have the lift. It's not extended in this photo, but it has the capability to extend up high and reach those towers that you saw in the video. And this is our intake. So in this design, the cubes come in from this way and they get stacked along this large piece of metal that extends up. And then it gets stacked as a tall stack into the zone that we saw in the reveal video. <clears throat> so one of the most, oh, sorry. As we build, we put together the parts. And as I told you before, um, we create the, the designs that we were thinking about and we actually bring them to fruition at, by putting together uh, gears and metals and just using our creativity. And throughout this process, we are constantly testing to make sure our design works. Oftentimes our gear train may not be strong enough to lift up the lift and the intake. So if we test as we're building, we can catch problems early on. And this is a fundamental idea in any type of engineering because it's better to test as you're building and not realize afterwards 
that you've made like a pretty big mistake and have to start over again, um, then to actually incrementally test as you're building. Um, so <clears throat> we test basically our robots by programming and test, we work on the program as we're building as well. The program is not the thing that happens at the end, it happens as we're building the robot too, because if any of you guys are programmers, you know that it's impossible to have your program right on the first try and it takes a lot of testing as well. So um, <clears throat> programming the robot is, the process of programming is also uh, aligned closely with the process of building the robot. So one of the most important parts of robot is of robotics are gear ratios. Gears determine rotational speed, torque, and direction. So here's a quick informational video on gear ratios. And I'll explain a bit more about how exactly we use these gear ratios a bit later. The best way to understand gear ratios is to start with understanding exactly how circles work. What we'll need to remember is that the circumference of a circle is related to the circle's diameter. This math plays right into gear ratio design. If we start, we can just remove the teeth from gears to make them circles to make them easier to understand. Imagine two circles rolling against one another, assuming no slippage or infinite friction. If circle one has a diameter of 2.54 inches, multiplying it by pi, or the formula for circumference, leaves us with a circumference of eight inches. Another way to say this would be one full rotation of circle one will result in eight inches of displacement along the circle's edge. For circle two, let's give it a diameter of 0.3175 inches, which gives us a circumference of one inch. These two circles will roll together and have a gear ratio of eight to one, since circle one is eight times as big as circle two. A gear ratio of eight to one means that circle two rotates eight times for every time circle one rotates. Don't fall asleep on me yet though, we're going to get more complex. Stepping back from that example, gears aren't circles, they do have teeth. Gears have teeth because in the real world, there isn't an infinite amount of friction between two rolling circles. If there was infinite friction, then we'd have a whole host of other problems. Teeth also make exact gear ratios very easy to achieve. Rather than having to deal with diameters of gears, you can also use the number of teeth on a gear to achieve highly precise gear ratios. Gear ratios are never just arbitrary values, they're usually highly dependent upon needed torque and power output weighed with gear and material strength, so there's more engineering on the back end. Another big aspect that plays into the use of teeth in gears is manufacturing tolerances. Most gears can be built with fairly wide tolerances, respective to other parts, and the tighter a tolerance gets, the more expensive it is to manufacture. Teeth allow the manufacturing of gears with set diameters to be somewhat variant while still working and making manufacturing cheaper. Basic gear ratio math is fairly simple to understand, it's just simple division. However, it gets more complex when you implement them into actuality. Large. Okay, that was just a little introduction to gears. So, um, with gears basically that's how we get rotational <clears throat> motion so the motors that we use um, are usually set at a max speed but sometimes we need to go faster or we need more strength so <clears throat> you can manipulate gear ratios to do this so at the beginning we saw how there was an eight to one gear ratio how the large circle was spinning slower than the smaller circle and we can use this concept to create speed so if we power a large gear, so power means like if we attach the large gear to the motor and then we attach the wheel to the smaller gear, we can create, we can have the wheel move at a faster rate than the motor itself. And we use this concept to create fast chassis, create fast lifts. And reversely, this, we can also create torque. Torque is 
rotational mm, power. It's a rotational force. And if we, instead of driving, powering the large gear, if we power the small gear and attach um, a wheel or a lift to the large gear, that would create a lot more strength. And we can use torque ratios when we need to lift a lot of weight. Like, uh, as you saw, the cubes, they're a bit on the heavier side. So if you want to lift maybe five or six at a time, uh, you have to think about what gear ratio you want to use and make sure that your lift is strong enough to lift that much weight. And this is basically robotics is a bunch of gear ratios because <clears throat> different robots have different needs. Like as we talked about before in the manufacturing process, robots take loads off of, uh, they make human lives easier. And one of the ways they make human lives e easier is by lifting heavy things. So torque ratios, speed ratios, they're all used in the manufacturing industry. <clears throat> Um, also, gear ratios are not the only way you can create movement with robots. Um, <clears throat> many industries use pneumatics, which is a branch of engineering that makes use of gas or pressurized air. And pneumatic systems are used in industries and they're commonly powered by compressed air or compressed inert gases. And they may also, industries may also use hydraulics, which is the same thing except with water. Um, something that I use is elastics, and basically it cr elastics create tension. And sometimes to take away from the strain of motors, because like I said again, motors are often lifting a lot, we use rubber bands. In this photo, on the right, we have a lift that is extended, and on the left, we have a lift that is down. We choose two points that are close together when the lift is up, and two points that are far when the lift is down. And we put a rubber band between them to create tension to help move the lift upwards. So this is just another way to create movement besides electricity. <clears throat> so I've talked about the design process with regards to VEX and I have a video here with a bit more information about the process engineers go through. Let me play it real quick. Just it just has a bit more information about like uh, the industry and how the design process, the process of uh, building a robot is in the actual manufacturing industry. Robots have jumped from the screen and science fiction pages into our reality, disrupting almost every modern industry. Agriculture, space, travel, medicine, and manufacturing are just a couple of places robots have begun to appear. You could argue that they have already started to take over our world. Just in the past few decades, robots have reached new heights. The continual and rapid progress of artificial intelligence, paired with readily available large data sets, lower prices for sensors and electronics, and a steady demand for efficiency, has created the perfect storm for engineered innovation. Yet you should not be intimidated by robots. Though robots are certainly complicated pieces of machinery, they are also delightfully simple to understand. In a lot of cases, robots are based on us humans. You can even build your own simple robot at home. But before you can go off and make your own, you should understand a robot's workings first. Defining a robot can be tricky, as it tends to be used as a blanket term to describe any machine that can perform work or other actions normally performed by humans, either automatically or by remote control. On the most basic level, there are five major human organ systems that have a corollary in robotics. A skeletal structure, a muscle system to move the skeleton, a sensory system that receives information about the body and the surrounding environment, a power source to activate the muscles and sensors, and finally, a brain that processes sensory information and tells the muscles what to do. Many types of robots also include these systems. First, you have the controller of the robot, which could also be called the brain of the robot. A computer program usually runs this, and it gives the robot detailed commands to follow. Secondly, you have mechanical parts. 
These can include the motors, pistons, grippers, wheels, and gears, and help the robot move, grab, turn, and lift. They are usually powered by air, water, or electricity. Robots also have sensors that help them determine sizes, shapes, space between objects, and direction. And finally, robots have a power source. All of these components work together to control how a robot operates. Throughout the history of robotics, each of these components has improved vastly. Robots have been a long-standing trope in science fiction. However, by the 1960s, they were actually becoming a reality. The first real effort to build an autonomous machine that could move, reason, and act in its environment was the robot Shaky. Brought to life in 1966, Shaky is considered to be the world's first robot to embody artificial intelligence. Shaky could perceive its surroundings, logically deduce implicit facts from explicit ones, make a plan to achieve a goal, monitor the execution of a plan in the real world, and even correct its own errors. Shaky marked a new era in the age of robotics and computer science. Some of the algorithms used in robots and AI today have directly descended from Shaky. The area of robotics has evolved at breakneck speeds. Companies like Boston Dynamics are leading the charge, creating robots that can almost move as well as you. Honda's Asimo can learn independently, walk on two. Okay, so they're just gonna go over like examples and I'll move on because of that. So next, the next topic I'm gonna to be covering is robotics and programming. Like from the videos I've shown you and just my emphasis on how we are always programming and testing as we're building, Programming is a large part of robotics. Even the definition of robotics, it's an in interdisciplinary field between computer science and engineering. So as I mentioned in the beginning, robotics is a branch of computer science and engineering. And in VEX, we use C++, which is a programming language. And here are some of the components that we use to power a robot. So first we have the brain or the cortex. And this is the hub of the robot and it contains the code and it's connected to every sensor and motor. It sends power out to each of the motors based off of the Bluetooth signal it gets from the controller over here. And these are some motors. As you can see, we insert the axles um, in this slot over here and we can um, screw them onto metal using these um, this area. <clears throat> and the way robots move is based off of which motors get power. So let's pretend this motor is a, this draw, this drawing of a robot is um, like, let's pretend these are, these black uh, boxes are motors and let's pretend this uh, square is its chassis. Um, I want you guys to think about how would you make this robot turn right? Because the wheels can't move side to side like they do in a car. They they're just they just move. They have two directions, forward and backward. So, what motors would you power to make it turn right? Um, just think about it, and I'll give you like ten seconds, and then I'll move on to like the answer. You can also post the answer in the chat. Okay. Yeah, I have a yeah. Or if you would like to um, speak up, that would be really cool too. Would you, have, would you make the bottom right motor move, uh, uh, um, how do I say this? You would make the bottom right move backward and the bottom left move forward. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, pretty much, uh, I, I guess I forgot to say, but all of these are motors. So basically what he said was uh, correct. So you want the right motors to move backwards and the left motors to move forward. So you create a type of motion that mimics this. And similarly, uh, to make the robot turn left, instead of powering the left motors forward, you would power the right motors forward to create like a motion that's like this. So yeah. Um, and then finally, because there are multiple motors that need to be pro to be powered just to turn right, uh, we create functions. 
Um, functions are self-contained modules of code that ac accomplish a specific task. And the function consists of all actions that need to happen for it to turn right in this example. And this makes the programming process a lot e uh, easier. So um, another video, it's only 30 seconds, but this is an example of one of our autonomouses, uh, something that we programmed. And I'll, I'll, I'll quickly show it to you guys. Wait, 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 wait. So yeah, that was an example of the autonomous period that I the video talked about. And um Is it fully autonomous? Sorry, yeah, it is Sorry. fully autonomous. There's a 15 second period that is just controlled by code, and that is one of the things we do. Then in the rest of the time, so there's two sections in the game. There's the 15 period autonomous, which if you can score a lot of points, that gets like like a boost kind of, and you get more points added to your final score. And then there's the driver control, and that that's when you use the controller to move the robot. So those basically to program the driver control, you uh, assign like a move forward when these two buttons are pressed. But the autonomous is more like a set of um, things you want the robot rules. to do. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, here, here I have a simple grid of <clears throat> with two blocks. And if you guys would like, I would like you to type out like what commands you would use to get from the blue block to the pink one. Some commands you can use are like move forward X blocks turn right, turn left. Um, I'll give you like 25 seconds. Uh, if you would like to share your idea, you can also unmute if you want. But just kind of think about it in like a programming sense. Like what would you want to do to get from point A to point B? Move forward five blocks, turn right, move forward, move forward three blocks. Okay, that was quick. I guess you didn't need 25 seconds. But yeah, basically that I that's also one of the ideas I came up with. Um, from a programming sense, this is also a really efficient way to do it because um, many you people only... said uh, move forward five block turn right. Yeah, in the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah, Prithvin. Yeah, great job, guys. But yeah, that's Tanvi. also very efficient yeah. because uh, it only needs um, two, like. Uh, functions which instead of like this one where you need to go forward turn left turn right and then turn left again but How also about this diagonal diagonal oh that that could work but uh no no no, no. i'll talk about that later um okay. but yeah uh depending on what may be obstructing you in this process uh you'll have to choose a different uh route and you might have to go diagonal um so yeah, give me a second. Okay, and then the last two steps of the design process are um, to make improvements to our robot and communicate the results. The good part about this design process is that it's iterative. So if a subsystem fails and you and doesn't do its job, you can always go back to the brainstorming and research step and we just keep going through this process till eventually we find a design that works for us. So finally, as we are designing, oops, okay, as we're designing, it's important to document our steps. Um, if you guys, could you guys tell me like, why do you guys think documentation is import, important? So the documentation is like basically having an engineering notebook and writing down like the steps that you use or your thought process while building a robot. 
Why do you guys think that's because, important? Because during competition, because you, you can have record access what to you can, uh, like what mistakes you did, and then you can, uh, then in the next one, you can fix those mistakes, and then you can document another one. Mm -hmm. uh, both the answers I heard are correct. Definitely uh, having a tangible, uh, like resource for your previous mistakes can help you uh, look back when you have the same problem. And then uh, also in competitions, they do grade our notebooks. So if you want to get to the state and world level, you need to show that uh, you're able to doc document your process and you have good worth work ethic. So <clears throat> there are a bunch uh, of gonna... answers from the chat as well. Um, oh. Prithvin said to know what caused errors in say the code and Deepa said, so you know what you need to do to fix the code or make mm -hmm. it better. Balaji said, uh, knowledge sharing. I'm just yeah. reading out loud um, just okay. to see if everyone is, any, anyone cheated. <laughs> Very that interesting actually answers. really interesting. Uh, I think it does, it does add on. It is actually kind of important because um, when you're trying to patent something, you need to prove that this idea is yours. And that like, if you, if it is like, um, uh, <clears throat> like not copied or like inspired by somebody else's, you need to have your sources written down and you need to show every single step of your process. And that's just like having that in an engineering notebook like defends like your product and like the legal standpoint. And yeah, you guys pretty much uh, mentioned the other things. Yeah. Uh, are there any rules uh, that stop you from doing specific things uh do you mean like well doc in the vex competition i mean yeah there are many roles like um there are some sizing constraints like you can't build a robot that just like blocks half the field and doesn't let anybody else like come to the other half so like there are this is where like the criteria and constraints come in i didn't mention it that much but you have to also look at the rules of the game and make sure your robot uh ad adheres to those so um, this is an example. Um, one of, more question on the oh. competition front uh, from Balaji earlier. How much in advance the topic for the competition is given? OK, so um, the game is usually released in like May or June. And then competitions start starting in like October. So you have uh, like five months to start preparing. and But most teams like start in like August when school starts because a lot of VEX teams are school teams. But if you're a private team, you can work over the summer. Or if your school works, like let's you work over the summer, you can. Can I move on? Thank you. Yeah, that's all. I don't see any other questions at the moment. Okay. And this is some this is some examples of the uh, documentation I do. Um, it's a lot of uh, for me personally. I like to. It's like it's good to have a lot of drawings to help visualize and not in like uh labels so that people can recreate your robot essentially in like a more broader context if you're creating a product you want to be able to go back and recreate the whole process and create the product uh screw by screw and like I identically so a, a, a good notebook really documents the process and says why you did certain things so finally uh i will be talking about how you can become more involved in robotics. So um, first you can take courses on Coursera or Udemy. There are free ones, which I'll show you on the next slide, but they provide you with a good foundation of knowledge and understanding of robotics. There are also courses from universities, but you may have to pay a little bit. And there are also opportunities to join robotics programs, especially, especially in the Irvine area. I know that Jeffrey Trails Middle School has a robotics team and that Korean Lutheran has one. So if any of you guys like look or just do some like digging into your school, you might find that they have an actual like VEX robotics team or many schools have like PLTW or engineering classes. And they also take, talk about the design process and let you uh, experiment with gears and robotics. And then uh, there are also companies that specialize in robotics for kids. Uh, I know Lego sells robotics kits that you can tinker with, and you can also play with Arduino. That's more of like programming, but in general, like because programming is closely related to robotics, like pro learning to program is also in general preparing you for 
uh, a future career in robotics. So, and then, yeah, if you aren't, if you don't find any other opportunities, uh, the last the last resort you could do is be your own robot, Vex Robotics team. You just need to like have the materials, and then you need to pay for registration for a competition, and you could essentially uh, be your own team and uh, compete and like be part of the program. So yeah. Overall, I would suggest using the resources available to you to stay up to date on current innovations and learning a programming language. Like learning programming, like it can be like used in like anything and it's something you can do from your computer at home. And yeah, some I'm gonna go over some benefits. Oh, so here are some of the Udemy courses that I was looking at. Uh, so as I said, the Lego, there's like a beginner course on that. And there's also uh, one on robotics and automation, specifically with the sensors and motors. And there's also introduction to robotics and autonomous car design. Car design. So it, uh, there's a lot of opportunities for you to focus on exactly what part of uh, robotics you're interested in. And the great thing is that they're free. And I found these just by searching like free robotics courses. And there were a lot. So really using your resources builds up a good base of knowledge. And this is how I built up my knowledge too, by just using anything I had to, to come up with, because that helps me come up with new ideas uh, for to come up with the game that are unique and not necessarily something that someone has done before. Um, do we have time for a Kahoot? Um, how long uh, it would go? uh it's 20 questions so it might take like 10 15 minutes um i think it's okay um okay. We're, we're on time yeah all right wait so you, okay as i'm like i can take it or no we can right. go ahead yeah we can go okay, ahead and cool. take, take up the kahoot yeah all right cool so just as a quick summary there are robotics is very beneficial um you can learn a programming language you can learn about uh, mechanical engineering documentation and it's also a great opportunity to work on a team because I know people say that like working on a team is important and that you'll like run into problems but you actually do run into problems like working on a team is a skill and like having experience with that and like uh, making sure everybody has something to do and using everybody's skills wisely is a skill that doesn't just come after working for one day it's something that's learned. And of course you have the opportunity to compete at state and world levels. And uh, it's just a great experience. And most of this whole thing is about the experience that you get. So yeah, we'll move on to the Kahoot. Okay, let me pull that up. Um, Megan, Megan, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. So I know yeah. you've been with uh, robotics for like five plus years, right? So yeah. um, do you think like, uh, you know, wish I had known this before kind of thing. Like, you know, um, when you had under some challenges that you later mm -hmm. face, like, you know, wish I had known this before. Um, one thing for me is that build quality. So oftentimes when you're new to something, you'll just kind of put it together without really thinking about like the structural stability. You just kind of want to get it to work. But eventually like the instability, like, gets to it like it just adds up and the robot doesn't move as fast as it needs to and then it affects like the way the robot drives like you can't drive straight forward it goes to the side a little bit so i think that like for, if i were to go back in time i would stress like building things like very precisely and like making sure everything is stable and not just going straight into something but yeah that's something that i would do okay thank you okay um, um, there is one more question from Deepa. Is there mm -hmm. a, is there some design that you cannot make? Um... Ooh. <clears throat> yeah, uh, let me think. So in one of the rules that Vex has is that you can't have something detached from the robot. Like the robot has to stay like as a robot on the field. You can't like detach like something that will like trap the other robot and then leave it and then play around. So that's one of the things you can't do. And then I also mentioned before how there's a sizing constraint. So you can't build a robot that just goes like, like that, like you needs to, and stays there the whole time. It needs to like actually do things. And those rules are just in place to like 
make sure that the premise of the game is to actually score points, not to just be defensive and destroy other robots. But yeah, uh, I will pull up the Kahoot now. It's 20 questions, it's pretty simple. I think you guys will do fine. Okay. Uh, So you may have to give a little um, introduction about Kahoot to the, I'm not sure okay. that all the participants <laughs> might be aware okay. of it. Some of them may not be mm -hmm. fully aware of it. So, yeah. So Kahoot is like a quiz um, uh, uh, website. And basically I will go to kahoot.it and enter this pin. And then I will have a question displayed on my screen, the Zoom screen, and they'll have answers. And then you'll click the symbol of the answer on like your separate device or your separate tab. And you'll rank, you'll get points. And then whoever uh, answers the most questions correctly will um, win. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have any prize, but yeah. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll give everyone like a few more seconds. Okay, is that everyone? Or would anyone like me to wait for a bit more? Um, I see. You know, I see twenty-four participants. <laughs> I think I will get um, started. Yeah, let's get started. Yeah. Okay. Okay, question number one, how many subsystems are there in VEX? Who's supposed to answer? Oh, uh, everyone. Just oh, you click it on. Yeah, you click it on your like device that you logged into Kahoot with. Okay, so yeah, the answer was three. So just to reiterate, it was the chassis, the lift and the intake. We'll go to the next one. So the link is sent in the group, right? Uh, group chat. Uh, oh no, there's a there's a code. Um, it's right here four three three eight seven eight. Okay. All right. So if uh, anybody wants to know, the link is in the chat, you need to put this code and then you, you'll be in the game. Okay. How can you make a robot turn left? So left. So yeah, this was um, the opposite of what I showed on the slide. So it's kind of a trick question, but yeah. So uh, to turn left, you'd want the left motors to move backward and the right motors to turn forward to create like this type of motion. Okay. Ooh. Okay, Rohit is first. We'll go to the next question. Which is not a step in the design process? Uh, so yeah, um, <clears throat> base, uh, define the problem was the first thing where you come up with criteria and constraints and then brainstorming research is part of coming up with the creative ideas. And 
coming up with idea is like what you should not do. Like you want to come up with different ideas because that's part of like uh, finding the best one that suits your um, goals. Okay, Rohit, this one first. Okay, true or false, the robot is programmed after the robot is built. Okay, yeah, so false. So the we were programming as we build because uh, as we because in order to test the robot, we need to have a program. Okay. Gears may be used to Okay, good job, guys. Okay, yay, Rohit, everyone on the leaderboard, good job. Okay, what industries use robotics? Yeah, this one is pretty good job. The chassis is the part of the robot that uh, the whole robot is on, and it has the wheels and the gears, and it manipulates like the speed and stuff. So yeah, nice job, guys. So you have a small gear and a large gear. If you want to increase the speed, blank is powered and blank is attached to the wheel. Which of the following is not a reason why documentation is important? What is a function in programming? Yeah, functions again make programming a lot more easier and it increases the readability. Oh, this is a repeat, I think. But yeah, you guys can, more points. Okay, yay, everyone got the 
it correct this time. And what is pneumatics? Uh, the disease is pneumonia, not pneumatics, but good job, guys. Oh, sorry. Which fields use the design process? I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Yeah, all of the above use the design process. It's basically like all types of engineering and even like any field that creates a product uses the design process. Which of the following should you document? Yeah, so all of these should be documented because any change should be on paper so that you can back up your uh, design. Besides actually doing robotics, what's the best way to learn robotics? This is like kind of like choose the best way. So just pick which one. <laughs> Yeah, okay, good job. Which of the following is not a, co a component used while programming in VEX? Programming. Ooh. Uh, I guess I should. Maybe it was a bad question, but yeah, the brain, motor, and sensors are all um, manipulated by the program. And elastics is more of a mechanical thing. No hitting a ma. No, no, no hitting a ma. No, no hitting a ma. Uh, which of the following is not a way to create movement with robots, with robotics? Not a way. So yeah, the goal of everything is to be automated and like using your hands uh, would uh, not, that would defeat the purpose. So yeah, we're done. Who's on the podium? We have comma period, yay, third place. And Prithvin, second. And Rohit, yay, good job guys. Good job Rohit, good job Prithvin. <laughs> And runners up, Deepa and Vahan. Okay. Good job, Deepa and Vahan. Yeah. Good job, come on. Okay. Full stop. Okay. Yeah. Uh, give me a second. Sorry, I need a. That was me. My I actually I, I my game crashed. I put a random thing. Oh, <laughs> good job, Ajay. Then. Thank you. Sorry, I like 
I'm surprised okay. that you got third joining three questions straight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you guys have any questions for me? Let me. Can you still hear the Kahoot music? Uh, not now. No. Can you hear the commu the Kahoot music? No, not now. No. No. Okay. So, do you guys have any more questions? Uh, is there anything that, in. Yeah, you want to share? Or uh, sorry, done, right? give me a second. Oh. I don't know what's happening. I'm going to stop sharing real quick. Okay. Uh, I'm going to look through the chat to see if there's any. How did I get involved in robotics? Um, so in my uh, middle school, uh, we had a robotics class and it used VEX robotics as like, the curriculum. And so I got interested through that. And then my um, uh, high school happened to have a, a robotics team. So I joined it and I've just been a part of it ever since. What does VEX start, stand for? Um, I have no idea, but I will search that up right now. Let's see. I think it doesn't stand for anything. Yeah. The definition of the word is to like make someone feel annoyed or frustrated, but I think it's just like a um, their name. Uh, is that all, everyone? Any any questions, participants? Feel free to unmute and ask or put it in the chat. Your questions. Okay. Well, I guess that's oh. Maybe it's just a set. <laughs> yeah, good one, good one. I think, I, I personally think Vex is like a pretty aesthetic name, but yeah. Okay, uh, I think that's all for me then. Thank you guys so much for participating and being just amazing people to present to. Thank you, thank you, Meghna. Uh, participants, um, if there uh, is no Uncle, other- Uncle, I can't hear you. Well, we can hear him. Yeah, me okay. too. You can hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Meghna, you can hear me? Can you hear me? No, only Meghna can't hear me. <laughs> All right. So um, thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, I would like to call upon if, if there is any volunteer to uh, give a feedback please feel free to unmute and um, or raise, you can raise your hand or you can, um, any, any volunteers to give a feedback or share your comments. All right. Um, yeah. Um, Okay, so I don't see any other volunteers. So I would like to um, uh, thank Magna. Um, so Magna, it's really um, amazing to have you here in the presentation, and you um, you you uh, really touched upon so many areas of uh, robotics, and um, it it's it's the need of the hour to stay on top of the innovation and technology and um, the various uh, areas of uh, use use in the in the in various industries like uh, agriculture manufacturing and aerospace and 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 whatnot so robotics is kind of a latest uh, you know all industries are doing a lot of in investment in robotics and uh, and also they are scaling up a lot in um, in their robotics investment so this is a uh, really informative and um, i think uh, and I, I think you you um, touched upon several areas for different ages of kids, like you know, for pe for beginners, like you know, where to start, and uh, uh, the Udemy courses or Coursera courses, and you touched upon so so many things for them. And the Kahoot se session was really <laughs> interesting. And thanks for doing it. And um, we re um, the so-called Tamil Youth Leadership and Entrepreneurship Team. We wish you good luck with all the. Uh, for all your endeavors, and uh, we wish you good luck um, to be to to achieve uh, all your, to achieve um, all your wishes. And uh, uh, it's really have, great to have you here. And Anu, um, you want to have you want to share some words for um, Meghna? 
Oh yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Meghna. Uh, I'm I'm very 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 impressed, and um, I'm so touched by the way you made everyone participate even in Kahoot. And um, I'm amazed by the number of participants who joined in. And I'm sure many people would definitely want the recorded session uh, to benefit from it later also. And uh, I'm really impressed by the work that you've done. I wish I heard more from you earlier uh, when we spoke. Thank you. Okay. And Thank you so much. One more thing. Uh, is it possible for you to share the Udemy courses in the WhatsApp group? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Should I just Thank send them you. to you? Oh, yeah, you can send it to me or uh, your mom is also in the group. So you can uh, share it either through her. So whoever wants to have a look at it, it will benefit them. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, and thank, thank you. you. And also the um, presentation, if you don't mind, you can share. If you don't have any, you know, patented or uh, you know, private information, you, yeah, you can take it out and yeah, uh, and you can share. And also the the YouTube videos that you shared in the meeting, it's really informative to uh, so many students. So if you could share it with either Anu or your, um, to the group, we can post it in our uh, style uh, Google Classroom. That would be more beneficial for a lot of students. Thank you. Thanks again. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Thanks, participants, for joining. Um, it, thank, thank you. Let me stop recording.